it's time to find out whether or not I'm a book snob. Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I have a quick tag that I wanted to go ahead and film. I first saw Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand do this and it seemed like a super fun fast tag. I believe it was originally created by Tia from Tia and all the books and I will try to remember to link the original tag video down below so that you can go check it out. Question number one is adaptation snob. Do you always read the book before you see the movie? The short answer to this is not always. So there are some times when this is completely unintentional where I will have seen a television show or movie that is an actual adaptation of a book and I just didn't know it. But there are some times when I actively choose not to read the book before seeing the movie or the television show. If I am just not interested in reading the book but the adaptation looks good, I will definitely go ahead and make the decision to see the adaptation without reading the book. An example of this probably would be Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. My husband really wanted to go see the movie because he loved the book. I had never read the book, never had any interest in reading the book, and I still don't. But I went to see the movie and I enjoyed it well enough. I know a lot of people are probably screaming at me about that right now because that book is so beloved and a lot of people really disliked that adaptation. But because I had never read the book, I think I was able to enjoy the adaptation on its own merits and I still have no interest in reading the book. So another example probably would be the upcoming adaptation of A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. It is being made into a movie called A Man Called Otto with Tom Hanks and I love Tom Hanks and it looks like he is going to do a fantastic job in this role but I don't really have any interest in reading the book but in general if I have a book that I'm interested in and I know it's getting an adaptation I absolutely want to read the book before the adaptation but if it's not a book that I want to read I am willing to go see the adaptation without reading the book. Question number two is format snob. You can only choose one format in which to read books for the rest of your life. Which format do you choose? Physical, ebooks, or audiobooks? Hands down, no contest, audiobooks. I would probably not read it all if it were not for audiobooks. In my adult years, I have lost almost all ability to sit down and concentrate on a book. There is almost never a time when I can sit down and become fully absorbed in a book, and there's almost never a time when I'm actually in the mood to do that. I'm always thinking about what I need to do next or what I want to be doing next, and so that really hinders the physical reading process for me. And I love love audiobooks because it allows me to multitask. I can listen to audiobooks while I'm driving back and forth to work, while I'm doing chores around the house and things of that nature, and I wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. And so I can actually now read books at a faster pace because I'm listening to them on audio. So I would not hesitate to only choose audiobooks for the rest of my life. I would be sad not to be able to maintain like my physical book collection. Like if I wasn't allowed to actually own physical books, if I, if I could only own the audiobooks, I would be sad about that. But yeah, I would choose audiobooks. Question number three is ship snob. Would you date or marry a non-reader? And I actually kind of did. My husband is a gamer more than anything. Video games are his passion, his interest. It's basically how he spends a lot of his free time. He does have select authors and series that he does pick up when new books are released. For example, he really likes the Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton. That series probably has at least uh, probably like 25 books in it by now and he's read all of them. He's up to date. He does also like the series written by Ari Salvatore. I know that he that author has been around for quite some time and has written multiple different series and he does do that. For the most part in general, he is he's not a big reader at all. Question number four is genre snob. You have to ditch one genre never to be read again for the rest of your life. Which one do you ditch? So I know that this is not technically a genre, but I would say classics. I don't appreciate classics like I feel they're meant to be appreciated. I have enjoyed some to an extent like Jane Eyre and Persuasion but they are not necessarily new favorites. They're nothing I'm ever going to reread and I don't necessarily look forward to reading them. I do try to read around one a year but it's not something like yay classics. No it's not. If I had to formally put that into a genre, I would say they most closely resemble like literary fiction. I'm not a big literary fiction reader. I read some every now and then, but a lot of the time I find it a bit too highbrow and pretentious for me. So it's definitely not my favorite. So probably literary fiction. I mean, there are definitely a lot of genres that I don't read at all, like Westerns, but I don't necessarily want to get rid of that genre because I don't have anything against the genre. I just don't read it. So if I had to choose a genre that I have read in the past and may read in the future, it would be literary fiction. Question number five is uber genre snob. You can only choose to read from one genre for the rest of your life. Which one do you choose? I'm actually going to echo Sarah here because like me she reads a lot of mystery 
thriller suspense books. That is probably my all-time favorite genre. That is what I gravitate to the most. That is what I'm always in the mood to read. I read it year round and that is what I'm always looking for like in new releases and book of the month books and things like that. So 100% that is my favorite genre. But I don't think I'm going to choose that as my genre. And the reason why is because there's only so much variation in that genre. Even if you're reading a book that is fairly unique in plot and twist, there's always a lot of similarities in tones and tropes and things of that nature. And every now and then you just, you need a break from that, right? You need to go read something else to clear your palate. So if I'm not able to do that, I don't know if I could select that genre as my favorite, my one and only genre for the rest of my life. So I would probably actually choose fantasy. All age ranges of fantasy, all subgenres of fantasy. I would choose fantasy because fantasy runs the gamut. You can have a fantasy book set in a real world. You can have a high fantasy set in a completely made up world. You can have fantasy that does have its own mystery thrillerish aspects, murders and crime and all of that stuff. So I really feel like fantasy can encompass a lot of different genres. I would probably greatly miss reading mystery thrillers. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't necessarily know if I would be able to pick that as my one and only genre. But now as I'm talking, as I'm thinking about it, I'm just like stressed out at the thought of not being able to have mystery thriller genre. I don't know. Am I gonna backpedal? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know y'all because I just love my mystery thriller so much. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna say fantasy is the one genre that I would probably read if I couldn't read any other genres for the rest of my life. Question number six is community snob. Which genre do you think receives the most snobbery from the bookish community? So I would say nowadays in the online bookish community, I would like to think we're all a lot more accepting and tolerant of people's reading choices. No matter what they're reading, as long as you're reading, we don't care what it is. And there's a channel out there for everybody. Like if you want to find a booktube channel that is dedicated to reading unusual smutty books, like those alien barbarian books that I hear so much about, you're going to be able to find a channel for that. I really don't think that we're in the habit now of throwing as much shade. I would probably say that still though today romance is probably still the genre and all of its subgenres that get the most snobbery. And I don't even necessarily think it's like outright snobbery. I just think it's a, not a lot of people's thing. I think a lot of people don't prefer romance. Like even in the books that they're reading, they don't want any romance at all. And so that would probably be my answer. But like I said, you know, at least with the people that I'm watching and interacting with in the online bookish community, I'm not seeing a lot of snobbery out there, which is progress, right? We shouldn't be policing what anybody is reading or judging what anybody is reading. As long as they are reading and enjoying what they're reading, that is what's important. But if I had to choose one, I would probably say romance, smut, that general area. And the final question is snobbery recipient. Have you ever been snubbed for something that you've been reading or just for reading in general? I can't really think of an instance off the top of my head where I have been snubbed. I, I know that there have been probably instances where I've been afraid to be snubbed in what I'm reading, but I'm not really in positions to be snubbed. Like, you know, I'm not really physically reading books in public that, you know, might be snubbed because like they have a shirtless man on the cover or anything like that. There have been times when I will be listening to an audiobook and my windows will be down or something and I will be right next to a car and something will be happening and I will be like, oh boy, <laughs> that person's gonna think I'm really weird. Um, like with razor blade tears, like with all of the violence and the gruesome gritty and the language and stuff like that that happened in razor blade tears, there, there were moments when I was just like, oh, people are not gonna understand what I'm reading at all. But outright criticized or snubbed for what I'm reading, thankfully, no, I can't think of an instance off the top of my head where that has happened to me. And then again, Again, like I said, I just, I don't see a lot of that in the online bookish community. And while I've been a member of the online bookish community, I personally can't think of a time when I've experienced that, luckily. All right, y'all, that is it. That is the book snob tag. Like I said, super quick and fun. I just really liked the questions and wanted to go ahead and do the tag and film it for y'all. And if you are interested in doing it yourself, please do. I'm not sure who has done this tag already. So I don't want to name anybody in this video, but if you do decide to do this tag, please let me know. I would love to see your video. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.